How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on a home light generator that has a Subaru engine on it. So let's get right into it. So we have a home light LR4300. It's a 4300 watt generator with a seven and a half horsepower Robin Subaru EY28 engine on it. And my customer complained that it wouldn't start but the main complaint was that there was a smell of fuel. So we're assuming that the needle valve is leaking. You guys can see we're starting to work on snow blowers and generators and a chainsaw over there. We are transitioning into winter and it is just starting to snow. So everybody's bringing in their generators because you never know when the power could go out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna remove the little tabs here. Air filter looks clean. Doesn't look like there's too much debris in there. I'm gonna disconnect the spark plug cap here and it looks like it takes a BPR6HS spark plug. First thing I'm gonna do is just remove the plug. So now I'm just gonna test for spark. You guys can see there is in fact spark. Just remember that it's easier to pull the engine over with the spark plug out so that your engine's not under compression. The spark plug doesn't actually look all that bad, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up on a wire wheel. I've set the spark plug gap to 30 thousandths of an inch using a spark plug gap tool. So we'll go ahead and reinstall that. So testing for spark simply eliminates that as a possible issue causing this engine not to start. So I'm assuming that it's most likely just a gummed up carburetor because my customer said that there was some fuel left in it. So I'm going to drain the fuel into a jar. Then I can go ahead and disconnect the line at the carburetor and then using my compressor blow out the line or back purge it so to speak so that I know that the fuel line is clear and free of debris. Then we can have a look at our leaky carburetor. Now while the rest of the fuel drains out into my jerry can there, I'm just going to have a quick look at the fuel and draining it into a mason jar or any kind of see-through jar basically just gives you an idea of what the fuel looks like and that'll give you a good indication of what the carburetor is going to look like. We can see that it doesn't look like there's any water in there but it doesn't smell like high octane fuel. It almost smells like Varsol so it is old fuel and at this point if you wanted to go ahead and kind of rule out any other issue that the engine may have simply grab a can of carb cleaner spray it into your carburetor and give your engine a pull with the spark plug hooked up if it fires up and then it dies then it's most likely just a gummed up carburetor i can also hear that the gas cap vent is working so to remove this carburetor i'm going to go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter nuts and now that those are removed we can go ahead and pull the carburetor off of the two mounting studs and then as we're pulling it we can pop out this little linkage here. We'll disconnect that spring and we should be good to go to remove this carburetor. So now that the carburetor is removed, you just wanna take note of how the linkage is hooked up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that as well as the spring and set it off to the side. And removing the last 10 millimeter bolt, I just went ahead and removed the air filter backing plate. So now we have the carburetor here. We can see there's a little bit of what appears to be like sawdust on the outside of the carburetor. It is kind of like a Honda carburetor. We have our pilot jet there. We have our air fuel mixture screw there, fuel inlet choke and throttle plate at the back, which is moving. So I'm just gonna drain the fuel that is in the bowl and then we'll bring it over to the workbench and disassemble it. Now in a carburetor that hasn't been disassembled in a while, a lot of times these fuel bowls get seized into place. I always recommend having a woodworker's vise lets you go and break those bolts free. So right away, after removing the bowl, you guys can see there's some gunk in the bottom there, but I can tell that this carburetor is gummed up and I guarantee that main jet is clogged. So before I remove the float and the needle valve, I just hooked up my pressure tester and I'm just gonna go ahead and pump this up and you guys can see that the needle valve is in fact leaking. That's why I always like seeing shutoff valves because if you ever have a leaky needle valve on a carburetor, you can simply go ahead and shut the fuel valve off and then you don't have like 10 or 15 or 20 liters of fuel going through your carburetor and just leaking out onto your shop floor. Now the float rod is seized on this carburetor, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my spring-loaded center punch to remove that. I did a video on that, you guys should check it out. I'll link it in the top right of your screen. Now I would normally try to get the main jet removed from the carburetor, but I gave it a, just a light turn and I can tell that it's completely seized in there. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and remove the pilot jet up at the top and I'll go ahead and get this carburetor into my ultrasonic cleaner. If you guys haven't seen me clean carburetors before, 
check out the video that I link in the top right of your screen as well as in the description down below on cleaning a carburetor that's essentially just the same as this. It's a Honda carburetor and uh, it's pretty much identical to this one. And that right there guys is the cause of our leak. So that needle valve after sitting pushed into the fuel inlet has deformed ever so slightly and that's going to cause our leak. So while my carb's cleaning in the ultrasonic, I'm going to go ahead and replace this fuel filter. I'm going to be replacing it with a Stenz 12746 shop pack. You guys can see I buy them by the bundle here. And these are pretty much the same. Normally for reference, the white ones are for mowers with a fuel pump. So you'll see them on like a Craftsman that has a diaphragm style fuel pump. And then the red ones here are normally for a gravity feed design. However, on this engine, it doesn't have a fuel pump. It's just gravity fed. So we're gonna go ahead and use a red one. It should be fine. I'm just gonna blow out the line, make sure there's no debris in there. Quick visual inspection on the fuel line and it looks brand new. And there's no need to back purge the fuel tank line into the fuel tank because the fuel drained out and I know that the cap vents properly. So we can now go ahead and hook up our new fuel filter. Now you guys notice how bottom clamp is gold in color, top clamp is green, check this out. But if I try to move the clamp up top, it does not move. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my fuel filter and I'll put a tighter clamp on it and then that'll take care of that. I ended up using a 12 millimeter fuel line clamp so now if I try to move that, you guys can see that's not moving. Nice and tight, don't have to worry about any potential fuel leaks. Nothing quite beats these ultrasonic cleaners. I've been running this for about eight minutes now. I'm just letting it sit and you guys can see all the nasty crap that's coming out of here. Most of this is probably like bits of ethanol and you guys can see there's some oil and gas that's floating to the surface. I set the time that I want to run my carburetor on and I click start and it sounds a little something like this. Basically it just uses vibration to bust up any of the little debris in there. And the cleaner that I use is Indo 701. It's an industrial detergent. Basically it's just a concentrated degreaser. So I'm gonna let this carburetor run for another eight minutes. Now to find parts for this machine, I just simply went to Google, typed in EY28 parts. And you guys are gonna see in the diagram that the main jet assembly is actually broken up into three different pieces. You have the main jet at the bottom of this diagram, you have the distribution tube, and then you have the threaded insert that goes into the main intake tube of the carburetor. So without removing that completely and disassembling those three pieces, you're never going to be able to ensure that you've got them perfectly clean. So basically I'm hoping that by breaking stuff up in the ultrasonic cleaner first and doing a preemptive clean, we'll loosen up enough of the gunk so that I can remove that main jet. Now looking at this carb gasket here, you guys can see that it's cracking. So I wanna go ahead and replace that. So looking at the diagram, we can see that uh, that's gonna be part number 18. And I'm also gonna need the needle valve, which is gonna be part number 14. So I now have the carburetor all clean and I have the pilot jet reinstalled. Once I get my new needle valve and bowl gasket and we assemble this carb, you know, install it and run it, if the generator has a surge to it, then I can go ahead and bore out or oversize the hole in the pilot jet there to give this engine a little bit more fuel on the idle circuit. If you guys wanna see a video on how to fix surging on one of these style carburetors with the removable pilot jet, I'll link it in the top right of your screen. You can check that video out. And the needle valve right there, it is a rubber tip. There is a trick you can do. They say you can put these into brake cleaner and it softens up the rubber, kind of makes it swell a little bit and will you know, kind of help you in a pinch if you ever needed to. But because I'm doing this as a business professionally, then I don't really like to cut corners and kind of redneck fix stuff. So I'd rather replace it even if the part is gonna be slightly more expensive than what a normal needle valve would be. So it's been about a week now and I finally got my parts from Montreal. We have a brand new needle valve and there's your part number on top there. And we also now have a brand new bowl gasket. They call it a chamber packing. Again, there's the part number for that. But both part numbers will be written in the description down below. I've gone ahead and laid in my new bowl gasket because the old one had a little crack in it and I didn't really want to reuse it. I've gone ahead and put a little bit of three in one oil into the fuel inlet here. And here is our new needle valve. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the float and the needle valve onto the carburetor, get the float pin installed, and then we'll go ahead and use my Stenz carburetor pressure tool to test the carburetor. So with my carburetor upside down, I've hooked up my pressure tester 
and it is holding at about three and a half PSI and it's holding. So this is not leaking. This carburetor is ready to go back onto the machine. Now the bowl gasket was fairly cheap. However, the needle valve that cost $47.99, I believe. So with 13% HST here in Canada, I believe the bill was like 72, almost $73. Pretty unbelievable markup on that. And I know that the place that I bought it from uh, didn't mark it up that much because, you know, it is a Subaru part at the end of the day. And manufacturers like that like to charge way more than what the part should be costing. Like those things are probably mass produced in Japan or China for literally pennies, but I wanted to use OEM parts and then I know that there won't be a problem. So at least the main issue of the leaking carburetor has been solved. If I put this back on and it runs like crap, then I can always pull it off and try to get the distribution tube out of there at that point, because I'm fairly certain that I got this carburetor nice and clean. I cleaned it five times in my ultrasonic cleaner just to be careful. So I ran it twice with real hot water and then I ran it another three times and then I blew it out with the compressor real good. So it should be good to go. The only real tricky part I had was trying to get the spring back onto the linkage there because what Honda does is normally they drill a small tiny hole for the spring itself on both the governor arm and the throttle plate up at the top but this one just goes through the same hole that the throttle linkage goes through so that was a little tricky but i just used a small pair of needle nose pliers to get that done so i hooked up my fuel line got the fuel line clamped and put my air filter backing plate onto the carburetor and also ran the crankcase breather tube into the air box so i'm just going to go ahead and reinstall the air filter now the air filter itself is in excellent condition and the pre-filter still looked good enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead, reinstall that onto the machine. I'll get some fresh 91 octane into the fuel tank. I'll just double check the oil once again. Oil level is satisfactory. I got my fuel in the on position now. Choke is on. Maybe you need choke a little bit more. So the generator fired up and ran on choke and when I took it off a of choke it died. Now I don't think it's a fueling issue because I pulled the plug and the plug is wet but I never really ran these BPR 6 HS plugs and I'm just going to try to find a replacement. You can't use a BPR 6 ES because the insulator actually is longer. So I think I'm going to have to use a Torch E6 RTC plug which is like a lower grade than an NGK or a Champion, but it's something that I might have here in the shop. Okay, so I'm gonna be replacing the NGK BPR6HS with a Champion RL82YC. It's a direct replacement. So I'm gonna get this in, take it outside, try and fire it up again, see how it runs. That's what it was. So something as simple as a spark plug, I took the plug out, took it to my wire wheel, dried it out, put it back in, and it still wouldn't start. So with the new spark plug, if I come back to it, and we try to fire this thing up again, we're gonna see if it fires up first pull. There we go. Just what I wanted. Well, that's it for today's video. We were able to get the needle valve sealed up on that carburetor, and even though I couldn't get the main jet removed from the carburetor, it ended up running perfectly, and I think it's because I ran it in my ultrasonic cleaner a little bit longer than what I normally would have. So like I mentioned earlier, I ran it twice with boiling water, and then another three times as the water cooled. And at the end of that, the machine ended up firing up first pull, and it runs awesome. Now I didn't end up changing the oil because the level was okay and it still looked fairly good. I think my customer spent enough money on this with the parts having to be shipped from Montreal. I had to pay $10 in shipping and that needle valve was unbelievably expensive. So like I said, I think it cost like around $72 just in those two carburetor parts. So with the addition of the fuel filter and the spark plug and some fresh fuel, I thought, you know what? There's no point in changing the oil. We can service that next year. But normally when you have a leaky needle valve, your fuel will flood from the 
carburetor into the cylinder, past the piston rings, and then down into the bottom end and dilute your engine oil. That didn't happen because this generator has a fuel shutoff valve on it. So when my customer smelt fuel, he was able to turn off the fuel shutoff valve, which prevented the crankcase from filling with fuel. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check the channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.